Uh, so I'm Jake Braun. Uh, I am the former acting principal deputy national cyber director in the White House, which means I was like the COO in the new uh, cyber office in the White House. But more importantly for this talk, I am the chairman of DEF CON Franklin, which is a new project that Jeff Moss and I um, have put together uh, to, to do two uh, big projects that we think are going to help uh, evolve DEF CON into kind of its next phase as, a, as an entity and organization and so on. So we named it Franklin after, as you can tell by the sign, Benjamin Franklin, um, because he did two very important things that are related to what we're doing. Number one, he put out Poor Richard's Almanac every year, um, and he started the first uh, volunteer fire department in the United States in Philly in the 1700s. So I'll come back to those things and why they're relevant uh, in a second. But uh, let me explain a little bit of how we got here. So uh, when I was in, in the cyber office in the White House, we were tasked with um, putting together a uh, report on the cyber posture of the United States. And as you can imagine, there was a lot of hand wringing and like, oh my goodness, what should we say, you know, the, the posture of the United States is and, and, and what we're doing about it and so on. And so this went on for months and months and months. And we came up with the kind of five key trends uh, that, you know, were important in cyber. Uh, things like ransomware, threats to critical infrastructure, um, commercial spyware being sold to the bad guys, you know, th things like that. And then we came up with a list of things that the federal government was doing about it. Uh, which was important. I mean, that, that was fine for us. That was our remit. We're the White House. We should talk about what the government's doing. But I felt like there was something missing. There was like another, there should have been another section to this that someone else should write, which is going to be us, which is what is civil society doing? What are the researchers at DEF CON doing? What are hackers doing? What's the scientific community doing uh, to address these threats, to kind of understand what, what we're going to do about uh, these, these trends in cyber and so on? And so as Jeff and I started talking about this, we were like, well, um, you know, we should think through what other things have been, would be kind of like that that we've done before. And we looked at what the Voting Village did. Um, I was one of the co-founders of the Voting Village. And we used to put out a report every year. And we, I had grad students, like my wonderful grad students here from University of Chicago, who would go around to the Voting Village and they would sit there and look over the, the researchers' shoulders and say, hey, what are you doing? What, can you explain this to me? What is that? Um, we take some of the info from some of the best talks that we had, and we would uh, put that into a report. And the report was wound up being really important for us uh, because we would release that about three months after DEF CON, and it did a few things for us. So one, it got us a bunch of new coverage that was um, about like the findings and put it in context for policymakers to understand, okay, you know, when somebody hacked into this voting machine, well, what does that mean and why should I care and, and what can I do about it? So it got us a new bite at the apple in terms of public policymakers um, uh, being able to read news and so on about what came out of DEF CON. But then because it was very unique and there was nothing else like it, um, we wound up getting invited to Capitol Hill every year to release this report on Capitol Hill, which gave us an amazing amount of access to policymakers that otherwise we would never have at DEF CON. I mean, there's a few members of Congress who come here, but being able to go to Congress and talk about the findings was huge for us. And it had like some pretty big impact. I mean, we, I'm, we should, I'm not taking full credit, um, but uh, DEF CON had a, had a, in the voting village, had some relevance in uh, getting rid of the machines in Virginia and Georgia in particular. Um, and, and by the way, you know when Trump made that call to the Secretary of State in Georgia and said, find me 15,000 or however many it was, um, votes? And the guy was like, we can't, sir, because we counted the votes, we counted the ballots, and we counted them again, and the number is the number. He wouldn't have been able to say that if they didn't get rid of the touchscreen voting machines they had just a couple years before that. And part of the reason they got rid of those machines was because of the research we did at the voting village. But had we not put out this report, that would have never happened. Also, when the report came out, Congress um, released about $400 million of funding to remove um, or to buy new voting equipment um, around the country that was more secure. And so if you think about it, like, that is real impact, right? I mean, if you're, like, having whole states change out their voting infrastructure, getting Congress to allocate hundreds of millions of dollars to a problem, and so we're like, okay, well, we should be doing that for all of DEF CON. Why, why, it shouldn't just be a voting village thing. So 
Um, back to my Benjamin Franklin thing, Benjamin Franklin. Um, so poor Richard Almanac that he put out every year that had very interesting information uh, that was important to the people of, of his time. Uh, we are going to start annually putting out uh, the Hacker's Almanac, and that will be um, from uh, my grad students and others who will go around to the villages and identify the most innovative and interesting things that's happening at the village, capture that. Also, um, they're going to see some of the speakers that we think are the most innovative and have kind of some of the most cutting edge talks, and we'll capture those. Um, they're interviewing the speakers and so on, and put that into a report that we'll release every year. Uh, and I, I anticipate and hope we'll be asked to release it in Congress again, like we were the Voting Village Report. And we're also going to, we fully intend to go to different capitals around the world, so it's not just an American thing, so policymakers all over the world can benefit from all the amazing research that's done here at DEF CON. So uh, thing one that we're going to do as part of Project Franklin is uh, produce an annual Hacker's Almanac uh, based on everything that goes, uh, goes on here over four days. Thing two is uh, another thing that kind of started from what Jeff and I were, were looking at in terms of these new threats to critical infrastructure. So, you know, we all know that the banks and the defense industrial base and um, the energy sector and so on have been being hacked for a long time and we're, we spend billions to protect that critical infrastructure. But recently, as I'm sure people in this room know, uh, other parts of critical infrastructure that are just as deeply important to us but have nowhere near the budgets the banks or the defense industrial base do are now being hacked at levels we never saw before like water utilities and K through 12 school districts. And you know, when Benjamin Franklin set up the volunteer fire department in, in Philly, it was over 100 years before there was a professional fire department in the United States of paid firefighters. And I fully believe um, after kind of seeing what we were looking at at the White House of, of trying to secure 50,000 water utilities around the country and over 100,000 schools and school districts around the country, it will be 100 years before these little water utilities and tiny school districts who don't have enough money to pay teachers or um, engineers at the water utilities um, are going to have enough money to hire cyber professionals. And so you can probably see where I'm going with this. Uh, we're going to take, a, again, a page from the Voting Village where we ran a small pilot in 2020 where we put out a call to everybody and said, hey, uh, these local election offices do not have a budget to hire cyber professionals for the most part. I mean, the really big ones do, maybe New York City, Chicago, LA, whatever. But most of these other little guys and gals in, you know, tiny townships in Michigan and Wisconsin and so on, they will never in our lifetime, I don't think, have a budget to hire real cyber professionals. And neither will these water utilities and school districts. So we put out a call at the voting village and said, hey, anybody who wants to volunteer to help your local uh, election office do better cybersecurity, um, sign up here and we will connect you with uh, a, an election office that wants help. And so it, it was incredibly successful on a whole host of fronts. So first off, there was so much interest from the DEF CON community that we just shut down the sign-up form after two weeks because we had so many hundreds, I think it was actually over a thousand people who signed up just in two weeks. I didn't have enough staff to do intake on uh, all the, the volunteers who were interested. That was thing one. Thing two was the election offices their main complaint was they said, why didn't you call me six months ago? Like, I desperately need this help. And so uh, that, that being said, uh, the, it's not like everything was successful. We learned a lot, too. Um, initially, we were like, oh, we'll be like Uber, but for hackers and election offices, where we'll just say, okay, hacker, you know, Joe Blow, um, you're from this city or you live in this city. We're going to connect you to this office, and then you guys will go do great things. Well, that didn't work at all um, because... A lot of times the election offices, and this is definitely true for schools and water utilities, they don't know, they don't know what to ask for, right? And a lot of times the hacker wants to come in and do like post-quantum encryption or something on the, on the system and it's like, no, 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 like these guys literally need to do like MFA and like change their default passwords. Um, and so, so what we're not gonna do is Uber for um, cyber volunteers and water in school. It's more like match.com with a marriage counselor um, where we will hook up uh, volunteers and uh, the, the water utility or the school district and then we'll kind of stay engaged for the first month or two and say, okay, school district, here's kind of what you should be asking for 
um, or why don't you tell us what you think you need, and then we'll help work with the hacker to come and provide it, and then say to the hacker, like, look, these guys aren't ready for post-quantum encryption. Can you please help them, like, change their default passwords and understand some of the basic things they need to do, and then kind of stay engaged with this for a few months, uh, and then they can go off and make, you know, wonderful uh, music together for, you know, for the rest of time. Uh, so we are going to, and if you see the little, uh, well, I guess I'm pointing at what you're seeing up here, um, the QR code, uh, you can sign up to volunteer. We'll be pushing this out on social media and so on um, for folks to, to sign up to volunteer and help either their local school district or their local water utility, or as um, in my mind's eye, what I think will hopefully be where we get to eventually with all this is that uh, I think about Allen-McKee County, Iowa. So Allen-McKee County, Iowa is a, a county of 10,000 people. Um, I don't care how much money we give Allen-McKee County, Iowa, there isn't somebody who lives anywhere um, close to Allen-McKee County, Iowa who knows cyber very well. And if they do, they're not going to live there for very long because they're going to go get hired by a bank or somewhere in Chicago or New York or California or something. But you know what? I bet there is somebody who lives in Chicago or Silicon Valley or whatever who's from Allen-McKee County, Iowa, and they would be willing to get on the phone with them once a month or a couple times a month and talk through what they should do. And maybe when they're home for the holidays, they could go into the office and, and kind of do some hands-on support for them. And so uh, if, if that's where we can get to with this initiative, um, that's kind of where we're, we're seeking to land. And so um, this brings me back to, to Benjamin Franklin. So as he um, stood up this volunteer fire department program, it really spread around the country and we're hoping uh, for the same thing here. Um, what we, what Jeff and I have been talking about in terms of, you know, we've built this amazing, he built, he built this amazing community um, with all of you uh, that does all this amazing research. Um, we'd never really understood how civic minded this this community was until we did the voting village. And I remember me and Hari Hursty on the on year two, we're walking, it was a Caesars, and we're walking down the hallway and there's 200 yards long. I mean, it was, it was down one of those huge hallways and then down another one. And it was four people deep, the whole, the line. And I was looking at Hari, who was one of the other founders of the voting village. And I was like, what the hell are all these people in line for? And he's like, I don't know, I think the merch store is down here. I'm like, dude, these fucking people aren't in line for merch. Like, this is like, I don't know what's going on. And so we kind of tap one of the people on the shoulder and we were like, hey, what are you guys here for? And they were like, oh, the voting village. And we were like, holy shit. Like, we've really tapped into something. And what we came to find over time was, this is a community of people that is deeply interested in civil society, in democracy, in, in big things that we care about and, and giving back to their community and trying to figure out like how could these amazing talents that so many people in this community have uh, be used to help their neighborhood, to help their society and so on and so forth. And so after 30 some years of DEF CON, it's like th this is time to kind of move to this next phase where we leverage this community to do stuff um, to help society uh, both from the research that's done here and from actual hands-on volunteering and so on afterwards. And so uh, let me end, and I'm going to try and take a question uh, or two if I can, uh, with, you know, we, we didn't just name this Franklin because of uh, the Poor Richard's Almanac and the Volunteer Fire Department. It's also because Benjamin Franklin kind of embodied what, what we really want to see this evolution be. You know, he was he was kind of considered the, the pinnacle of the Enlightenment or the, you know, the, the time of the, the Enlightenment, those 200 years from Galileo basically to Benjamin Franklin, where there was this deep commitment to science and empirical research in pursuit of happiness, right? It was Benjamin Franklin, he wasn't just a scientist that um, created the bifocals, as you'll see on the, on the sign, um, or didn't, he didn't just do amazing research in electricity. He didn't just create actually this really weird but very cool musical instrument that Beethoven actually composed music on. Um, he didn't just do those, all that amazing research, scientific discovery, inventions, and so on. He also created the first volunteer fire department. He created the first library in the United States. He was one of the people who helped Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson write the fucking Declaration of Independence. Um, and it's that commitment to both science and civics that commitment to empirical research and our society and giving back to our community that we want 
this next phase of DEF CON to be. And this is why we're, we're launching Franklin today. And so anyway, I encourage everybody here to sign up. Um, I really encourage everybody to tell all your friends to sign up. We're going to push this out on social, like I said. Please retweet it and everything else to, to everybody you know to get more people to sign up. And uh, um, thank you very much. And I'm happy to take a couple questions if there are any in the last four minutes that I have. Thanks. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm glad you asked. Um, <clears throat> Oh, he's asking if we're looking at hospitals and rural medicine. Um, we, we do want to expand this, but I'm really glad you asked because I forgot to mention, um, there is, you know, in the last few years, um, several organizations that have stepped up to really kind of try and do more in this space. So like the Berkeley Cyber Clinic Program is, has a network of universities they work with to train uh, people to do things like um, help their uh, local hospital and so on and so forth. Um, there's multiple other organizations, like there's some corporate entities that are letting their staff volunteer on certain things. We're working with a few of them. Um, we're also working with the National Rural Water Association, who's helping us plug people into rural water utilities. Um, and uh, and so there's there's uh, other, oh, and there's some state programs where they use their National Guard, who aren't exactly volunteers, but in a similar way we're talking about. And so we plan to work with all these organizations on that. And and some of them that we will be working with are focused on, on rural hospitals and so on. Anybody else? I've got two minutes and 42 seconds left. Yes, sir. Sure. That's great. Thank you. So he said, what kind of skills are we looking for? Is it like really just like helping people know that they need to change their default password? Um, so no, we're looking for everything. And, and, you know, I didn't go into all the types of support we provided. But in fact, there was this uh, one guy, um, John Odom, who was an election official in Vermont. And he, he actually comes to DEF CON, he's very sophisticated, and he was building an actually more secure voter registration system, and we did actually hook up somebody who was um, uh, an encryption you know, expert with him to do some very sophisticated stuff. And so uh, it is kind of uh, you know, that all the way down to the really basic stuff. So w you'll see when you get to the, um, to the site to sign up that it does ask, like, you know, what are your, you know, the qualifications that you have or what, you know, how can you be the most helpful? What is it that you know? Um, and so we'll try and match people. I mean, we really like the geography thing. Like, are you from there or do you live there now um, at the place where they need help? But where someone says, we really need help with a sysadmin type thing and somebody signed up who says, I'm a sysadmin, well, then we're going to try and connect you based on that as well. Thank you. That was a good question. All right. I've got a one minute and seven seconds left. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I didn't go into this before. One minute, okay. Um, that's something we do um, as part of this project. So we built a list of the 10,000 um, election um, offices in the country and then out, reached out to all of them. Um, we're working with the National Water Association, uh, Rural Water Association, to reach out to the, I think, like 45,000 of the water utilities in the country are rural, and so they have access to them. And then we'll build a list of the school districts in the country, and then, and then we'll do the outreach uh, to them to, to identify um, folks who want the help. 16 seconds. All right. Thanks, everybody. Sign up to volunteer. Help your co country.